Uh, hello, we are Group 10. Uh, today we are uh, presenting simulation of emergency vehicle-to-vehicle uh, vehicle communication. And um, our introduction and scenario would be, first of all, presenting the problem statement, which is, uh, in the nowadays world, the number of cars uh, increasing every day. And due to this problem, roads are becoming more and more dangerous. And so um, emergency vehicles are also facing issues to reach their destinations in, on time to avoid crashes. And overall, uh, the daily life of citizens in roads is increasingly becoming risky and unsafe. Um, one of the solutions would be just to have like a network among the vehicles, which is called vehicular ad hoc networks. And um, having uh, this vehicle to vehicle communication and infrastructure um, would be um, one of the best solutions, and uh, that's what uh, IEEE designed the standard, which is called Wi-Fi P 802.11p. Um, regarding the Wi-Fi protocol, first of all, um, it, it, it works in a dedicated short-range communication spectrum, which consists of seven channels, one control channel, six service channels, and every channel has a 10 megahertz bandwidth. It consists of the control channel um, of 178 and is, and is defined for use by roadside unit services providers to transmit high priority safety messages and to announce the uh, uh, or advertise the services. Two channels, 180 and 182, are designated for low power, short range communications. Also, other two channels, 174 and 176, are designated for medium power, medium range communications, and also channel 184 is specifically designated for high power, longer range safety of life applications such as intersection collision avoidance. Uh, so WAVE protocol uses uh, DSRC spectrum. WAVE protocol uh, is a standard which provides unique com communication mode which is called as wave short message protocols, which enable the exchange of messages in a rapidly varying radio frequency environment where low latency is an important objective. Now we have the transport layer and the network layer, which is IEEE 1609.3 and IEEE 1609.4. The network and the transport layer defines the networking services, including routing and addressing in accordance to secure wave data exchange, it provides an efficient wave-specific alternative to IPv6 by defining wave short messages. IEEE 1609.4 defines a time division scheme for DSRC radios to alternatively switch within these channels to support different applications concurrently. This layer allows operations of upper layers across multiple channels without having any knowledge of physical layer parameters. The physical and the MAC layer of 802.11p will be explained in a clear manner in the next two slides. For now, WME Wave Management Entity is a software element used for managing wave subsystem. This element is responsible for service advertisement, handling configurations, and management of frames for the MAC and physical layers. The physical layer of 802.11p provides a link between the MAC layer and a medium which allows transmitting and receiving information. The formatting, coding of data and hardware specification according to certain requirement is taken care by the physical layer. It consists of two sub layers, namely the physical layer convergence protocol, which is this PLCP and the physical medium access. The PS PLCP communicates with the MAC layer and transforms the packet data unit PDU, which is this, coming from the MAC layer to make an OFDM frame, which is this. The later provides a connection between the physical transmission medium fiber, a medium and fiber links. The role of the defined physical layer is data transmission and reception by using different radio channels. Furthermore, one of the essential features of this particular protocol is that it defines a method of communication among the nodes where there is no association or authentication procedure to complete prior to exchanging of data. So the vehicles use a wildcard BSS ID in the header of the frames to send and receive data.
within the range of channels. Next, we'll move to the MAC layer. The MAC layer provides a connection between the network layer and a physical layer. For a vehicle network with dynamic nodes, a method is required to ensure that the transmission of data frame is collision free and have an orderly movement of frames. This is achieved by the distributed coordinated function, which is DCF technique, which lets the nodes contend for the channel access by employing CSMA or CA protocol, which is carrier sensing multiple access and collision avoidance protocol. So the working is explained in this diagram. When the channel is free, the vehicles transmit a request to send and it waits for a clear to send message. It waits for a short interframe space period to receive a CTS, which is clear to send. Once a connection has been established, data is sent and received. After receiving the data, an acknowledgement is received after waiting for an SIFS period, which is indicated here. And if the node sends that the channel is not idle, they wait for a stipulated amount of uh, random period before which they can transmit the frame. And after every data transfer, there is a waiting period called DIFS, which is distributed coordinated interframe space before which the next data can be transmitted. Next, we'll move on to the simulators. As you can see, we are using Veins and Omnet Plus Plus and Sumo combined together. So Veins is an open source vehicular simulation framework containing detailed models of IEEE 802.11p and IEEE 1609.4 DSRC or WAVE network layers. The, the vehicles in these models can be rerouted or reconfigured at will by the user. Scenarios containing traffic, roads, buildings, etc. can be imported from Wings. Wayne's works alongside an event-based network simulator called as Omnet++, which contains, which uh, ha provides various types of interfaces to visualize simulations, to exchange information or monitor certain parts of simulation. New protocols and models can be added onto the Omnet++ workspace. And it Veins also works along with Sumo, which is an open source package containing continuous traffic simulations designed to handle large road networks. Some of the uses of Sumo are traffic lights evaluation, traffic forecast, etc. The vehicles created in Sumo have its own predefined path and can be rerouted. The movement of vehicles in Sumo will be reflected as a movement of nodes in Omnet++. Veins has a manager module that is responsible for synchronizing the two simulators Sumo and Omnet++ and has two separate event queues for the same. In order to better visualize our implementation, we decided to prepare a video. Uh, in this video, we're going to show uh, the simulation from the two point of views. First, we're going to see the simulation from the Sumo viewpoint. As you can see, the emergency vehicle initiates the communication with the other cars in the system. In order to better visualize this communication in Sumo, we decided to change the color of the cars uh, initially entering the system from yellow to white. And then every time a car is receiving a message, the color of the car changes between white and blue. In addition, we decide that cars that receiving a message from the emergency vehicle uh, will perform a simple action of slowing down to the speed of 20 km per hour. This is just a simple action for the visualization, but a more sophisticated approach can be taken uh, in order for the emergency vehicle to reach the destination much faster.
Now we move on to the Omnic++ viewpoint. As you can see, the Emerge vehicle, which is denoted as node 0 in Omnic++, starts the initial communication with the other nodes. Upon receiving a new package, all other nodes retransmit this package to the other cars nearby. The actual simulation time can be found in the top right corner. In the final part of the video, we compare the simulation with and without the communication between the cars taking place. As it can be seen, even with the simple action of slowing down all other cars, the emergency vehicle manages to reach the destination much faster. Regarding the results, um, as you can see from the figure 7, it represents a bar chart, bar chart which depicts the lost packets. And uh, as you can see, lost packets increases exponentially with increasing cars in the, in the network. Also, the same happens with the packet traffic in, uh, in figure 9, uh, where total number of duplicated packets and total number of packets uh, increases drastically with increasing uh, cars uh, in the network. As you can see, 500 nodes um, have uh, way, way more uh, duplicated packets that to compare with, for example, uh, 200 nodes in the, in the network. Regarding the latency, which is depicted in figures 8, um, as you can see, the mean latency gets larger depending on the number of nodes and the distance between each node. So, um, as was expected, that uh, the mean latency was uh, larger, or largest in the, uh, when the simulation happened with 500 nodes. 
Uh, regarding our future work and improvements, first of all, we think that the better multi-hop method should be used for leading with probability or counter methods, where you count the number of uh, multi-hops and you limit the hops uh, of the each node. And also, flooding with probability would mean that uh, the each node flood the network with a specific probability. And 100% 100, 100 probability would mean that this is the same as flooding, but if we have like 50%, it would have way more, uh, more efficiency. Uh, other point would be try different, more scaled scenario reflecting the real cities. Right now we have maximum of 500 nodes. In real cities we have thousands or even hundred thousands. So it would be a, a, a good idea to have uh, results and see, investigate the, um, how, how the network behaves. Uh, also investigation, uh, investigate the signal shadowing and simulate the interaction with traffic environment and the last one, bound the flooding to a specific area of interest. Uh, because, for, uh, first of all, in the, our simulation, uh, we flooding around all the area of, uh, of our city. But in the real case scenario, it would be uh, way more efficient if we flood into area of interest and not flood the entire city with the same message. Uh, so thank you for our attention and uh, if you have any more questions or doubts then have a look into our report.